Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview or just show you another little library you can use on the front end to build out your applications. So if you used VanillaJS um, to try to build anything that's a little bit complex, you'll notice that it's actually really difficult and the code can become really unmanageable. So that's why we have like Vue and React and Angular and stuff like that. But if you used Vue and React and Angular, you notice that they're kind of a little bit more difficult to learn, especially if you're a beginner. Like there's a lot of stuff you gotta kind of cover. So I found this little library called HyperHTML, which is kind of in between, I would say, using vanilla JS um, and using like something like React. So it, it, basically it's a library that you can render out your DOM elements and have them dynamically update based on values that you have stored in your JavaScript. So if you notice here, um, I mean, it's pretty easy to get started. You just include this package. You don't need JSX. You don't need any other type of dependency. You don't need Webpack or Babel or whatever. But if you have an index file, you import it here and you can start writing some hyper HTML. So the, the cool thing about this is that all of the templates are used, are are created using string literals. So that's an ES6 uh, construct. So you could do like template is equal to HTML like so. And I think if you import that script, you get something called like uh, hyper HTML. So let me just do this. I think it's hyper, hyper HTML. I'm not, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. So let's just do this and see if this works. So I got a server hosted over here. I'm gonna go ahead and just try to render out something to my body. So document.body. Let's see if this works. All right, so prints out high. So basically you have, get rid of that. When you import this hyper HTML library, you have a method that you can pretty much bind uh, template literals to your divs or to your body or whatever and you'll notice that the syntax highlighting sucks for this but there is a plugin that you can use over here i think it's called literally literally html so if you install that i may have to restart i'm not sure but if you install that now we get some syntax highlighting so it's kind of like it's kind of like having jsx in your code but it's not so if you do something like this basically the the whole point of hyper html is that you can render out like variables and stuff so let's say i had a count variable so a count is equal to zero and i want to render, render that out well how do you do that with template literals you just do a, a money sign and then curly braces and then print out the count all right so that's going to print out zero um it just kind of helps you write you know your typical javascript without having to do like a bunch of event listeners you're doing a uh, document.create element and stuff. So it's a step above vanilla JS, but it's not as complex as React or something. So to take this a step further, let's say we had like a button. So instead of this being count, we had a button which contained count in it. So let's save that and we have a button now. And when we click it, we want to increment the count. So we can say on click, we could say increment. I always do this, make sure you, it's a string literal. So make sure you do the money sign. So let's make a function called increment. And that's all, all that's gonna do is basically just do count plus plus. And notice that this is a con, so we gotta change it to let. So let's try it again. If you click it, nothing happens. And the reason is you have to basically rerun this code. So what you could do here is you could put this in a render function. And I could render it when the page first loads. And then also after I increment my count, I could just render again. So let's try it again. If you click on it, notice that you can click on your button and increment your counts. So it's it's pretty elegant because it's super simple to get uh, get using or super simple to start using. Um, and you don't have to like learn all these other things or import all these libraries. You just can do various stuff. So let's just say another example is you want to render out a list of of names or something. So if I say like names is equal to uh, Bob. Sally and Ross or something. So how would you do that? Well, 
you could just do tempor template literals again and just map over it. So it's very similar to like JSX. And for each name that we have in our array, we could just render out a new, uh, pretty much a new HTML hyper HTML call. If that makes sense. So let's just do a function here. So I'm gonna do, instead of mapping a callback, I'm gonna say render name. Sorry, my child's in the room with me, so if she makes some noise. So that's gonna be a function that takes a name and that's going to return, uh, again, that's gonna return HTML with the template literal and we could pass in the name here. All right, so let's just go ahead and wrap this in something like a, a div or something and give it a class of name. Let's see. So now, when this renders, if I did this right, it should re render out those names, okay? And you can dynamically add names too. So let's say every time you click on increment, you wanna add something to name. So name.push, um, I'll say my own name, push Cody. So if I keep on clicking on this, we just keep on getting new divs rendered out. And you notice that it's pretty performant, right? It's, you don't see that it seems like it takes long to do stuff. Um, and if you look at their actual like a library, they have some performance benchmarks. I don't really understand like what like what that even means. Like what do they actually do to measure React versus this or vice versa? But from using it, it seems like it's a really simple tool that you can use to start dynamically generating and rendering out HTML. Again, you don't have to learn JSX. You don't have to learn Babel or Webpack or anything. You just basically import the script and you can start writing your JavaScript. Now, the useful thing about React in other libraries is that typically there's like a, a model that has your state or something and as your state changes your view kind of changes as well so that is possible so let's say we have something called like state and state is going to have names and it's also going to have a uh, count all right so let's do that and let's get rid of uh, some of this stuff. So I'm gonna put state up here to the top and then instead of count I'm gonna do state dot count plus plus and then state dot names plus plus and then anywhere that we have the variable that we had before let's just call state dot. So let's see if this works. It does. Okay so let's say you'll, you'll notice that on your callbacks or click callbacks and stuff you need to actually manually call render again. Well one thing you could do is if you know anything about JavaScript, you could do a watcher on this or you could do some type of deep watch. So if I do like, let's say JavaScript deep watch and just find some code, proxify. So let's just take this. This is really complex code. I'll be honest with you. I don't know it, but I'm sure you could find a library, but basically what you could do is using um, the built-in watchers or built-in proxy objects in JavaScript. So basically using the built-in proxy object in JavaScript, you could technically do a deep proxy watch on this state object. So I think they go down here and they say proxify. So we could say proxify this state object and then we want to pass it a, let's just call the render function. All right, so what I'm trying to do here is basically whenever your state changes, just re-render your component. So now I'd probably, if this was correct, I don't have to call re-render manually as I change, oops, why did I click that? As I change my state. So let's delete that and let us do this and we crashed, let's see. Cannot access render before initialization. Okay, so Maybe I need to call that in a callback. All right, set on proxy trap return falsy for. So, I mean, it seems like it's working. There's some issue. I don't know. When you just take code from Stack Overflow, you're going to run into issues, but you get the idea. I'm sure there's an NPM module. Oh yeah, there's a deep watch module. No, that's that's definitely not it.
we want to watch objects. So let's go over here. There's object observe. Anyway, we're getting into like more complex um, ideas. But I mean, if you're doing something really simple, like if you just want to have, if you have like static HTML and you just want to add some additional functionality to the stuff, this is a really cool library to try out. I'm not saying that you should do it, use it instead of React or use it instead of Vue or Angular. I just think it's another tool that you should be aware about. If you ever want to do something really simple and just kind of add some interactivity to your HTML or dynamically add or remove different DOM elements without having to deal with the verbosity of vanilla JS. All right, so let's look through here. Is there anything else I could kind of, this example was kind of bad. Let me just get rid of all that stuff. Let's get rid of all this nasty code. All right, so, so we forgot to call render here. And then as, as far as like the attributes, um, if you use React, you notice that you have to use like class name and like on click, that's camel case. And it's kind of, it's different. Like if you're a beginner, you're learning JavaScript, you've learned what on click is, right? You've learned what class is. But then when you start learning like React, you see class name and then you see like on click so I mean it's, they're not that big of changes but they are changes which kind of can overload how much you need to know just to get hit the ground running with building something and you can find that kind of frustrating and then when you go to react and you notice that you have like to learn about hooks and all these other things it can get kind of overwhelming and complicated but this is I mean it's your opinion it could be you could say this is just a silly library but I think it's actually pretty powerful and it's pretty simple to hit the ground running um, and uh, I think it's, I don't know how the render function works, but once you call HTML on like a node, every time you re-render, it's not like recreating everything. They do some smart stuff behind the scenes and they probably explain it somewhere in their docs. So I don't think you have to be um, afraid of re-rendering. So I think this is pretty powerful. You could probably build an entire, an entire single page application it's not very um, hyper HTML is not they don't dictate how stuff should look it's, it's just a library you can use it to render out some DOM elements and stuff so yeah I'm gonna wrap this tutorial I'm not even a tutorial I'm gonna wrap this talk up if you're interested in looking into this I'd say be sure to check it out see what you can build with it if you have some free time and you're getting kind of bored of just learning react there's nothing wrong with learning different libraries and frameworks. It kind of expands your knowledge of like how you can do different things in web development. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. If you thought this was a pretty cool library to so just quickly build up um, some HTML DOM elements, add event listeners and stuff like that, leave me a comment. Um, and if you like this overview, if you like overview videos where I just talk about various technologies that I've found and just try them out at a very high level, uh, let me know because I'll do more like this. I just wanted a break from doing tutorials and just more of a, of a talk and stuff, so. All right, anyway, thank you so much for watching. This is a Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert, and have a great day.